generals that were able to... Listen, do you understand that even death was not supposed to be so? Wow. That there are people like Elijah that would go to heaven by a chariot. Of course, people say it's a whirlwind. And a chariot, a chariot uh, separated them. And a whirlwind took them to heaven, took him to heaven. With the horses, everything, separating them. But watch this. How on earth is somebody going to heaven in flesh and is in heaven right now in flesh? Because there's something that they have touched that somebody had not touched. Notice these are not New Testament realities that they, that, that, that they are in. They are in Old Testament realities, experiencing a New Testament reality. So there is an ability of God to push you to a certain rank in the spirit. But if I teach you the principles that get you to that rank or teach myself the principles that get me to that rank, let me tell you something. There is the lifetime that we have is short that the reality of it all cannot be taught in your lifetime. Right. So you find a way to accelerate your knowledge in those things and push yourself to another level where even though the information will take you a lifetime to learn in order to get into the realm of the people that said, we don't die, we'll go to heaven by a chariot of fire. Something, something, something can happen right this minute where you can actually push yourself. I want you to read something in the book of Romans. Book of Romans, yeah. Yeah. chapter number eight. Chapter number eight. Are you hearing me? Palozi, come on, that place to Kushia. In verse number um, 23, it's so amazing that the Spirit had already given us a certain ability to see beyond and to experience the beyond. I don't know if you are getting this. That it says, says here in the King James, not only they but ourselves, also which have the first fruits of the Spirit. See, if you read it like that, you will never understand it until you read it in the New Living Translation where it says, And we believers also grown, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us, a foretest of future. A foretest of future. A foretest of the future glory. What he's saying is the Holy Ghost has the ability to present to us a certain level that we can increase our rank in the Spirit. The Holy Ghost. But if you read again, you realize the Bible says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Yeah. Now it's giving us a key that the word of God in you, when you increase it on a daily basis, you don't take your time off the word. Mm -hmm. Automatically, you are increasing yourself in the realm of ranks. Mm -hmm. A man with a word is more dangerous than a man with prayer. Hey. Now you didn't hear that yeah. now. So, so many of us think the prayer is the thing that gives us the ranks we need. Let me tell you again. Prayer has no power. Prayer is not powerful. Prayer has never had power ever. If prayer had power, then Africans and African continents and Asian continents, uh, we're talking about Asian countries rather, uh, like India would have the richest people on earth. It's not so. It's not so. It's not so. I don't know if you're getting this. Yes, sir. You're getting this, right? Oh, yes, sir. That's right. Prayer has no power. I, I, I want to I wanna get you to get this. Prayer has no power. What prayer has is the ability to transfer the power that you have to the place of efficacy, where you want it to really, really impact and put a change on. That's the power of prayer, to move, to flow with the power and get it to another level. You see this electricity in this place right now, these lights you, you can actually see, or these cameras that you see, they are not the electricity. They are wires that have gone through these things. And, and these wires are carrying, these cables and wires are carrying the electricity. So when you see these lights, they are a manifestation of power. They are not the power. They are a manifestation of it. And the cables are not the power. They just carry. So prayer is like the cable that carries the power to the source. From the source to the place where it's needed. So people with the word are more powerful than people with prayer. Now you say, but, but isn't the prayer coming from the word? It is. That's why it's called prosuche. Prosuche simply means what you have inside is what you put outside. 
Now, if you understand, that means you're using the Geiger principle or the Giga principle in computers, where garbage in, garbage out. So whatever you put inside is the thing that comes out. But there are some people who pray, but they don't pray according to the word. And they can do hours and go on mountains and mountains and mountains. Have you noticed that this is the reason why most prayer warriors are broke? Most prayer warriors are the ones in the prayer line. Most prayer warriors are the ones that wait for your car after church service. Why? Because ranks in the spirit are not obtained through prayer. They are obtained through the word. And when you get the word, it will force you to pray. But when you just decide, I'm going to pray, I don't have the word. You will lack power. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Notice, the Bible does not say faith comes by prayer and praying. It comes by the word of God. And the word of God, the, consistently, you wake up on the word. You feed on the word. Afternoon, feed on the word. Have lunch. Wait lunch. Wait dinner. Wait breakfast. So many people will just jump and go to the, for breakfast. Listen, ranks in the spirit can be increased. Ranks in the spirit can be increased. How can people like William Marion Branham be in America and is going to another country and he knows the intersection of the road, what road is called, the child will be, will be hit by the car, by name. And the ambulances that are going to be there and people trying to get this and brain matter is out of the skull. And he knows it before time. When he gets there, the brain matter is out and he grabs the baby and grabs him like this and holds him, <laughs> decrease and came back to life. Look for the brain matter. It's not there anymore. What causes people like this to act like this? What causes them to act in this way? It's a rank that is already different. I know what you call it. You call it different in anointing. Anointing is, anointing is higher. You don't understand. The same anointing we have received, the same anointing they received. It's the grace that's different. But that grace can be increased. The Bible says increase in grace through the knowledge of Christ. Through the knowledge. So your knowledge of the word increases your grace. Oh, you see, people talk about increasing of anointing. The anointing does not increase. And I understand it. You have heard preachers preach it. There is no one scripture to talk about the anointing increasing. Right. Not one. It's simply grace that increases. But how does grace increase? You heard it. Grow in grace through the knowledge of Christ. So you got to get in the knowledge of Christ every day in the morning, pre-breakfast, 6 a.m. You're reading the word. Find a verse, read it. Listen, put an alarm on if it's possible. Start up in the flesh, it will wind up in the spirit. You quickly do it. Why is it so that we have touched some, some elements of this glory? Once in a while, we touch it and then it is released from our lives. Symbol. We reduce in the word. And while you guys are watching right now, some of you are very young. And some of you are just wanting to go to another realm in the spirit where you can experience these things and, and you can do these mighty wonders and forces and, and show this power. The reality is, if we had people like us when we were growing up, telling us exactly what we are telling you young people to get into, imagine where we would we be. Right this minute. When people talk about major and say, oh, he can do this. Oh, in the prophetic, he can do, do this. Miracles, he can do this. Ridiculous uh, miracles, exponential miracles. You, you, the point is this, exponential growth. The point is this. You are talking about a man who he had no mentor to start with. But you have a mentor. Your advantage is you have some people like us who can tell you your lifetime is too short to learn the things that make you to be like Enoch. Your, though Enoch was not in the New Testament. <laughs> you have a shorter lifespan that you can't handle everything that makes you a magnet of spiritual resources. You can't. So you are at a disadvantage already. But you had a one advantage that you have mentors that can actually get you into this thing and push you into this thing. Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8. When you see something, verse number 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. 
Are you getting this? For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Watch this now. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. For they, for then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, now watch this. Notice here, it's saying the carnal mind is enmity with God. Does God not like your mind? In order to increase your rank, does he consult your mind? The point is very, very simple. What God is trying to do is a simple thing. Are you getting this? God is trying to get you to understand something that is very, very simple. God is trying to tell you the mind that you carry right this minute, you have one disadvantage. It is so learned in the things of the natural. The school you went to taught you the natural things. The science class you passed taught you natural stuff. The history lesson you passed, the one you told your father and your father was like, whoa, congratulations. It was educating your mind in the things of the carnality, of carnality. So you are an expert, a master, a doctor, so to speak, in carnality. So when the spirit is introduced, it goes against the information of the, of, of the natural. And carnality goes against the information you have in the spirit. But remember, you started from I don't know, from grade one, from uh, year one, you were studying carnality. 20 years in school, studying carnality. And only one Sunday where you studied spirituality. So your body is conditioned to understanding the things you should not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The things you don't understand, are is a, that's exactly what your body is conditioned to. So when we come in and say, you can actually walk through those walls. You say, uh, um, um, physics, um, immediately, your body con- goes against it immediately. Why? It is information. And that information is not just information. You were actually examined in that information. And you were given an A in that information. Now, this one is just the Bible talking. The immediate thing is to say no. If you hear men of God saying, um, I was in another town like we did in, in America. I was in another town. I checked in and the next minute we're already in the place that we're supposed to go. Ah, oh, why are they lying? Guess why you are saying lying? You were not there. But you are convinced it's a lie. Why? Because information that you passed, the, the college that you passed, the grade you passed told you it can't be like this. It's not possible. You can't get to another location without traveling, without transport. You can't. So you are so learned in the things of the, of the natural. Are you, are you getting this now? You hope you are getting it. 2 Corinthians 4. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Barry said, finally I've managed to find you. Um, a big listener of the prophet and always flowing. You have made me so mature. Uh, Bernard says, a man with the word is more dangerous than a man of prayer. Exactly. But a man of the word becomes a man of prayer. Mm. Now, now, ah, I want you to see something that the disciples said. And 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 10, I'll start. Always bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Watch this now. Very, very, very powerful statement. This is the truth. For we which live are always delivered unto death. Do you notice? He says for we. Now when you hear we here, you're thinking he's talking about Christians. He's talking about the, the, the apostles themselves are the ones uh, that he is representing here, Paul. Now here. Delivered unto death for, the, for Christ's sake, for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So he's talking about this mortal body. Now hear what he says. So then, bo- death works in us. Oh, okay. In what? You just told me about your mortal body. Now he's saying death is working in us. To do what? Watch this now. But life in you. Mm. He's saying... You know, the, the apostles are really are represented by Apostle Paul here. Are saying, we die so that you live. You know, you didn't get it. Because you, right now you are still on the superficial. You are not on the fundamental. 